<laughs> so, first 10 points are all done. Eight minutes, a couple of climbs on it. So, quite challenging, but as I said before, effort is the key. Felt like I hit it. Didn't see a dramatic slowdown, other than obviously terrain suggests that that was bang on. I've got a minute and 40 left of my recovery period before the next one. And basically, as always on this route, it'll kick in as I'm heading up towards that trig point in the distance. So, long hill climb for this next one. But it's just the way it is. That's my running route around here. I just got to embrace it. And I enjoy doing hilly ultras, so it's good conditioning, fitness, and mental toughness. So, 60 seconds left. I'll uh, stop talking for a minute, get my breath back a bit more. All right, so uh, in the shed, just getting ready to go out for a tempo interval session. So this is the first run of the week. I've had two rest days in a row. So Sunday and uh, yesterday, Monday, after doing the Yorkshire Three Peaks walk on the Saturday, which was about 24 miles over three, obviously mountain peaks in the Yorkshire um, National Park. So Sunday was always gonna be a day off. Monday, kind of wanted to see how I felt uh, to determine whether or not I was gonna do that run. Uh, this run's already today uh, or yesterday. So when I got up on Monday, I just opted to have it as another rest day, just did some mobility and a little bit of basic bodyweight strength work. So yeah, so we're going out for an interval session. We're gonna do four lots of eight minutes at tempo pace with a four minute recovery between each one and a mile warm up and then half a mile to a mile cool down afterwards. So the intensity of those tempos, we're looking at kind of just below your threshold in terms of effort, heart rate, pace, whatever you want to kind of record. For me, because I run it on the trails and including running up to the trig point that you may have seen in some of my videos, it tends to be one of the intervals falls on that hill climb. So I always use my tempo sessions um, based off RP, rate of perceived exertion. So for tempo work, we should be looking at an RP of eight to nine. So I use that effort level to determine whether or not I'm in the right training sort of zone as it were. Um, and so utilize that. It's raining outside, so it's a little bit cooler, which is nice. But because it is still relatively warm, it's probably about 15, 16 degrees, um, I'm still gonna just go out in shorts and t-shirt rather than using my waterproof running jacket just because I tend to find that I sweat in that at the best of times. So if I'm gonna go out and do a harder effort session like I'm about to now, it's probably not gonna provide me any relief in terms of keeping me dry because I'll just sweat a hell of a lot more inside the jacket anyway and probably still get soaked through. So I'm just gonna avoid that. I'm gonna run my session in my New Balance Summit Unknown 2s. All right, so good trail shoe, but they have uh, a what they call fuel cell technology in the cushioning. So it's nitrogen infused to make it have a better energy return apparently. Uh, and obviously therefore a little bit more sort of spring as it were. I just like them because they're a bit lighter than my Hoka's. Um, so they're good to just inject every now and again um, when I'm not needing that kind of uh, extra cushioning, especially on these kind of once or twice sessions a week that I'm doing on the tempo. Something that's a little bit less supportive for my needs, but allows me to feel like they're not kind of weighing me down as much is the reason why I use uh, such a shoe. So I'll be running those and I'll uh, report back to you during the session and see how we get on. Done three intervals now. Happy with how they felt and what I've been doing. I've had to go a bit slower on the recoveries. I don't know whether that's just a bit of overall fatigue or it's a bit muggy, so humidity's high. Either way, we we'll roll with it. I've got a minute and a half left of the recovery before my last interval and nicely on a bit of an incline, which is always good for recovery. But breathing's coming down, so feeling good. One more lot of eight minutes, 
that's the session done. Rain's eased off. So, made the right call not wearing a rockproof jacket. And like I said, it's still hot as balls. So, and yeah, rambled enough. 50 seconds left. I'll see you on the other side. In the gym again. This time I'm doing some lower body strength, um, predominantly some uh, back squats and some lunges. So at the moment with my hypertrophy focused program, um, I'm doing one lower body session per week, especially because I've put this hypertrophy program at this point in time in with my uh, tempo interval efforts. It's obviously quite demanding on the body as well. So that's why I've kind of just done one exposure to the lower body strength. Um, I've just done the tempo interval session this morning and then doing my lower body strength today. So a lot of people tend to kind of ask why um, or when, should I say, when should do they do strength training? The, the golden solution ideally would be to do uh, it on your hard effort days in terms of running, especially if it's lower body strength. So such as today, I've done tempo intervals and then lower body strength. Obviously upper body isn't necessarily as much of a concern, but any lower body plyometrics, try and do that on the same day as your harder effort running so that your easy runs or days off are dedicated to recovery rather than eating into that recovery more by doing a strength, tra strength training session on one of those particular days. However, like I said, that is the golden solution. If your time and your lifestyle doesn't allow for double sessions, um, I'm fortunate because I obviously work from home, I've got the flexibility to do both, then obviously you're going to have to do them on different days. So what I would recommend is that because you don't want the strength training to take away from any of your quality running sessions, make sure that you're doing any lower body stuff at least 24 hours before any of those particular quality sessions. Um, so for example, if you've got, like I did tempos today, and then tomorrow's an easy recovery day, uh, and then the day after is an also an easy recovery run, then obviously the day after the, the tempo sessions or sprints, whatever, would probably be the best point to put in uh, your lower body strength sessions. Other than that, if again, schedules dictate that you have to do it on a day that's within 24 hours of a tempo effort, then that's just that's just the way it is. You either have to manage your expectations that the tempo session might not be as um, as intense as it could be, or that you're going to come into a strength session and go, well, I can't lift as much weight because I'm quite sore from one of my quality sessions. And if that's just how your lifestyle goes, then that's fine. You know, you're working the schedule as best you can. You're working the sessions as best as possible. I certainly don't think that it means then you should just drop the strength stuff because it doesn't fit into these, you know, these typical uh, principles that we say you have to do it like this or do it like that. You've still got to let the trainer meet you where you are and you know, you're still going to get benefits from both sessions, especially as a recreational runner. If you're not necessarily being able to push out the certain speeds on the tempo, but you're still hitting the effort, then you're winning. If that means you, you know, you're having to go five, 10 kilos lighter on your squats or whatever, like I probably will have to today because my legs are a bit tired, you're still going to be getting some strength benefits and getting some movement options and mobility work and all that good stuff as well. So don't worry if your training doesn't fit nicely into set days and times like that, like people believe that's how it should be. At the end of the day, you've got to make it work for you. Um, but obviously, the basic principles I mentioned at the start, if you can adhere to them, that will just obviously optimize your training and recovery. If not, just accept that you might be a little bit more sore than normal. That's it. That is your chance to be hey, kid. Don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test if only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they want to rise up while you try. All 
All right, so just had a nice little delivery from Awesome Supplements. So on my last video, I talked about how I take their their Omega 3s and their, their vegan whey protein, kind of like um, the minimum supplements that I personally use, purely just because it obviously the fish oil helps with general health anyway. The Omegas definitely help with my joint health and, and all that sort of good stuff. Um, but... I've decided to try a couple of other things just because um, I feel like they may be of benefit to me. So when I've been going to the gym at the moment, especially now I'm doing a bit more training volume and with the warmer weather as well, I'm finding that I'm getting to the gym feeling quite flat. I'm happy that I'm eating enough generally. So I thought I'd try a pre-workout, but I wanted one without caffeine in because again, Obviously, that has effects on sleep and all that sort of stuff, especially if you're taking it later in the day. And I tend to go to the gym in the evening, so I thought I'd try that. Also, creatine has been shown to be of quite a good benefit just generally for strength and performance. And obviously, again, with the, mo with the moment where I'm doing uh, four strength sessions per week on top of my running, I just thought I'd see if that has some sort of benefit as well. And then some protein bars for convenience. So we've got a nice little supplement stack there. So... Two different flavors of their protein bars the roasted peanuts and then the dark chocolate smooth caramels um and then like i said we've got the creatine and the pre-workout so i'll be using those over the next obviously few weeks or so and i'll in one of my other videos i'll report back as to whether i've seen a benefit 